Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon to every one of you on board. Today, uh, this is our first uh, webinar series on mental health. My name is Cairo Bahrain from Academic and Research Excellence Division, University of Cyberjaya. And uh, I will be your moderator throughout this session. And I would like to thank every one of you here that come on board to participate and making this session possible for us to roll out. Our topic of discussion for this afternoon is about the effects of COVID-19 lockdown on mental health of students. Joining us today to discuss and deliberate further on this topic are three distinguished panelists. May I introduce, may I introduce the panelists? Uh, the first one, Professor Dr. Abdul Hamid Abdul Rahman. Hi, Professor Abdul Hamid. Are you on board with us? Hi, Assalamualaikum. Okay. Professor Abdul Hamid was a former clinical psychiatry at Faculty of Medicine, University Kebangsaan Malaysia. Throughout his career as an educator and clinical psychiatrist, Professor Dr. Abdul Hamid has published numerous papers in high impact journals in the area of psychiatry. Welcome on board, Professor Dr. Abdul Hamid to our first inaugural webinar session. Our second panelist is uh, Professor Dr. Rosna Ismail. Assalamualaikum, Professor Dr. Rosna. How are you? Assalamualaikum, <laughs> Prof. Yeah, we keep safe. And all the panelists. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Professor Dr. Rosna currently is a professor of psychology and attached to the Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, University of Cyberjaya. She was also an adjunct professor of psychology at University of Malaysia Sabah previously. And uh, Professor Dr. Rosna has also published quite a number of papers in reputed journals in the areas of social and cross-cultural psychology. Welcome on board. Thank you. And our third and final panelist, uh, may I welcome Associate Professor Dr. Zainal Akbar Zainal. Assalamualaikum, how are you? Waalaikumsalam. Hope doing... you are feeling feeling good <laughs> this <laughs> afternoon for oh, to share your uh, knowledge uh, with the uh, participants. Thank you. Bro. Yeah, Dr. Zaino is currently the director of Student Experience and Global Engagement or SEGI Division at University of Cyberjaya. He has been with the university close to about ten years, being an, an academician in research in the area of and he had, he had actively involved in research in the areas of pharmacy education as well as geri geriatric health. He is also currently supervising several PhD students. Okay, thank you. Welcome on board all the three panelists today. And before we can do so, let me start with some scenario impacting on the mental health issues uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic in our country. Uh, that we can share with all the uh, participants. Well, as we know, the current pandemic of COVID-19 situation has brought about massive disruption to our daily lives. The pandemic has not only seriously affected businesses, economic and financial of our beloved country, Malaysia, but it has also uh, caused uh, some uh, effect on, on the state of livelihood of every citizen in this country. And more important, it also affected the students in schools, colleges, and universities. Above all, the pandemic has directly impacted university students physically, mentally, socially, academically, and financially. So you see a whole range of uh, effects from this pandemic. Every one of us now has to switch from our normal practice or, no, or norms to a new norm. Now, the higher learning institutions like University of Sabajaya rapidly has changed and switched from normal face-to-face -face lectures, tutorials to an online teaching and learning or remote teaching and learning. The switch to online teaching, particularly in courses 
that were not originally designed for online delivery is likely to cause stress among students. In fact, this is really true for the new fresh students who join us quite recent and they even have not had the feeling of the university environment. Based on our records, many of these students were less performed due to this online teaching we are, which they are not comfortable with. Even some university courses involving simulation, clinical, uh, practical training, lab work, have not had any clear guidelines of how we are going to assess uh, the students accurately and, in, and perfectly. In addition to that, students themselves have faced several major challenges. I would like to share on this session a survey done by the University of Tex uh, A&M, Texas in USA in 2019 where they have done uh, research with 195 students across the university, uh, which uh, they had uh, during the uh, uh, COVID-19 situation. And what really uh, astonished us is actually the most apparent challenge from this survey, uh, which about close to 70% or majority of the students that participated in this research put anxiety and stress as the most rising trend of what they are facing right now due to this COVID. Moreover, the study has also found other concerns of the student. For example, concern about their own health. Another 91% indicated that COVID-19 increased the level of fear and worry about their own health. And apart from that, some uh, do reported that they have lost their concentration in their academic work due to the various distractions. Like for example, they are not comfortable to study at home since home is a place where they relax rather than study. And even some participants were mentioning that, you know, they were interrupted by their family members uh, when dealing with this online teaching and learning. So they are, all these factors are affecting the students and this has led to some academic concern uh, among the students. And in fact, some were saying that the quality of the classes has deteriorated, some technical issues with online uh, difficulties in, teach, in, in assessing to the materials. All this has resulted the student in terms of their performance in academic. So I think uh, with this background, again, this background, uh, we uh, now open for our discussion. Uh, maybe we can have our first finalist to discuss what is the scenario like now in, in Malaysia. This is in USA. So we don't know what is actually uh, the thing that the Malaysian students are facing. Uh, maybe uh, Prof. Dr. Abdul Hamid may kick off to provide us some scenario uh, to discuss on how it is different between mental health and mental illness and what are the symptoms and how can we help students to overcome this situation. So please, uh, may I invite Professor Dr. Hamid? Uh, you have about five minutes to deliberate for this session. Uh, Pro Hamid is having some difficulties with his uh, connection, internet connection. If that's so, then maybe we can move to the next uh, panel first. Professor Dr. Rosna. Hi. Hi, Professor Dr. Okay, Rosna. Right, right. Yeah, okay. Uh, based Thank on that you, scenario, yeah, based yeah. on that scenario that I've shared. Uh, which is happening or ha happened in the United States of America as a typical research uh, survey conducted there. Maybe uh, you can share with us, are uh, our university students prone to develop mental health issue like what the United States students are facing? And how are they different from secondary schools? And what are the, the mechanism that you can recommend 
uh, for us, uh, for the students, you know, to overcome the situation, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Prof. Yeah, mental health uh, topic is always uh, of students, uh, you know, in, in interest for all of us here yeah, throughout the world. Yeah, because the entire performance of students depends on his mental health. Yeah, so um, as uh, uh, Director General of um, uh, WHO, Dr. Tedros say that the impact of the pandemic on people's mental health is already extremely concerning. And uh, I, I was looking at the study done in Malaysia uh, in 2020 on the psychological impact of COVID-19 and lockdown among university students reveal that the main stresses yeah actually uh, besides uh, financial constraints are remote online teaching and uncertainty about the future with regards to academic and career see if as uh, prof mentioned yeah as a result of change of delivery of our university education technological concerns uh, of our online courses increase class workload among university students to catch up with online classes. And also they have class projects, they have assignments, and uh, some of them complain that they have lack in person support yeah, from instructors or lecturers or teaching assistants that have profound long term consequences yeah, in the lives of the individual students. Um, other issues that we found in the study or also in overseas, in USA, in Greece, in Italy, yeah, uh, increased level of social isolation. See, over uh, the study reveal over half of students indicated that their interactions uh, with other people such as friends has decreased significantly and lack of in-person interactions. For example, face-to-face -face meetings yeah, has longer term effects of social isolation on students. Even if only a few weeks, it can cause lasting anxiety. Okay. Also, um, uh, disruption of outdoor activities. For example, they used to go for jogging, swimming, etc., etc. But now no more, yeah, uh, or restricted, yeah. So it will uh, it affect actually mental health. And um, few studies has been done, yeah, to evaluate the psychological impacts of COVID-19 on university students. Um, among most commonly reported. Um, uh, changes on students are uh, lack of motivation. This not only university students, also um, secondary students or college students. Yeah, anxiety beside motivation, anxiety, depressive symptoms, uh, stress, and also isolation, as well as social distancing, educational changes, and going out less. Of course, yeah, because of uh, you know uh, lockdown. Also, study found that students expressed concern about their academic and professional concerns, as well as feelings of boredom and frustration and loneliness. Okay, now some experiencing depressive thoughts during COVID-19 lockdown. Yeah, that major contributors. Uh, were loneliness, of course, yeah, insecurity, uncertainty, uh, feel powerlessness, hopelessness, yeah, um, about academic performance and also overthinking. And also, uh, the the study uh, found that pandemic also has led to some suicidal thoughts due to depression. Studies in Western uh, countries reveal that students are at risk yeah, to develop depression and also suicidality in relation to COVID-19 outbreaks. So uh, the coping mechanism yeah, to cope with stress and anxiety imposed by this COVID-19 
um, students must seek support from others. Yeah, either from family members, friends, peers, you know, universities, but mainly, yeah, um, the self management method. Self management. They need to have a self management method. Yeah. Some, um, some of them rely on negative coping methods. For example, they just ignore um, uh, the news about the COVID-19. They sleep longer. They distracting themselves by doing other tasks. Uh, they, they drinking, smoking or what. That is negative coping methods. But some yeah, use positive coping methods. For example, meditation, breathing exercises spiritual measures, yeah, or keeping um, routines by uh, having this positive reframing, okay. But um, they also must improve their resilience, yeah, by learning uh, new coping strategies, maybe through practices like CBT, Cognitive Behaviour Therapy, yeah, um, and also regular monitoring of their stress levels, to prevent uh, them enter into the state of depression. Um, and also most importantly is communicating with your families and friends yeah, to deal with stress and anxiety. Um, they can, uh, well, university I think uh, uh, have prepared uh, that they, a forum or platform for them to have virtual meeting yeah, such as Zoom uh, to connect with friends and family. And also maybe they can get support, not maybe, they must get support for professional therapies. Yeah, like psychiatrists, they can utilize our university counseling uh, services. Okay, yeah, uh, maybe Dr. Zaino uh, afterward will, will, will explain further yeah, our, our services at the university. And also depression and suicidal risk assessments. We have we have that assessments. Yeah. And the most important thing to maintain healthy mindsets rather than avoiding stress. OK, uh, I think um, I stop here, uh, Prof. <laughs> Before yeah. I continue. Yes, yeah. yes. Time's up. Thank you so much for that brief uh, deliberation on some of the impacts negative on students uh, uh, as a result of this COVID-19 situation. For example, the lasting of anxiety for due to long classes uh, and so and also the, the effect of uh, this social isolation can also have a negative uh, impact on the student leading to student to, to uh, some kind of uh, negative uh, reflection, for example, like uh, having going into societal thoughts or those. Uh, even uh, Prof. Rosna, quite recent, we recent we received uh, uh, I mean a report from uh, some of the public universities. Uh, some of the uh, students were overstressed uh, mm. due to the assignment, to the workload that yeah. leads them to uh, uh, become the casualty, uh, you know, uh, of life. So this is really serious matter. Uh, mm. I think it's good that you know uh, we can get the students to consult the professional therapists, the counselors in their universities, or even to talk to friends or, or close parents, you know, about what, uh, how to overcome the situation. They cannot be keeping to themselves. Yeah. So this is uh, some of the issues brought up by Prof Rosna. So may we move to our second uh, panelist today, which is. Uh, uh, Prof. Dr. Abdul Hamid. Yeah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, uh, Prof. Abdul Hamid, welcome on board for our this uh, session of uh, uh, webinar. Yeah. So I would like to pose some questions to Prof. Yeah. Uh, what is the mental health and how it is different from mental illness? And what are the symptoms and how can we get uh, proper assistance uh, to overcome this uh, situation of uh, red flag uh, of uh, attitude and behavior of the students. Uh, please, Prof. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Can you hear me? Welcome, Salam. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Very yeah. clear. So, um, 
I understand that I, 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 I'm given, I was given a few, five minutes to, to talk on it. So I think it's a very short time. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, just to clarify that um, mental health, mental health is, uh, is a state of uh, normal uh, mental functions uh, in which the person, this is according to WHO uh, definition, uh, uh, the, according to the person, that uh, enable maintaining of normal mental function, that enable the person to be uh, uh, to to perform in the society, to cope cope with the stress, and to um, and to know the what about their their their, their ability. So since this is uh, this is the definition of mental health. Eh? It's a it's a mental well being of the person. Uh, then, uh, but the psychiatric disorder, the psychiatric disorder is actually an illness. It's a physical illness actually. Um, physical illness in which the symptoms, the symptoms are mainly psychological or non-physical non symptoms, uh, like you know, um, disturbance of thinking, disturbance of uh, cognition, disturbing or disturbance of perception and behavior problem. So these are the, the difference between mental health and mental and psychiatry or mental illness. So the problem with this uh, condition is that uh, people don't understand actually what actually mental illness. They thought is something something else uh, because the the the, the usual um, uh, imagination of people public when they hear about mental illness or psychiatric disorder. Then they imagine about the you know the um, the behavior, the aggressive behaviors, and then the the negligent of appearance and uh, other uh, very um, you know very disruptive features. Actually, uh, and then the the thought the the public thought that this is the the sign or symptom of mental illness. So this bring a lot of uh, you know uh, we call this uh, stigma to the to the patient. Um, Actually, the mental illness, the psychiatric illness, is not only uh, comprised of that type of condition. That type of condition comprises about 10% or less, but the rest are non, a non, a non, what we call psychotic disorder, which we don't see in the hospital. We see in the in the outpatient, the society. So uh, because these people don't have to get admitted, so that that brings the stigma uh, about mental illness. So, um, so, uh, so, it's, it's, so, uh, the I think the what well, there are so many, so many uh, causes of mental illness, and I think uh, one of the important one is the uh, no, the, 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 the thing like genetics um, and family history, you know, and some biological uh, abnormalities in the brain. But it is this condition is usually precipitated, precipitated. Uh, it precipitated. I mean, the con the illness is precipitated by by stresses, stresses. So, so the, what happened is that the the one of the stresses is actually like what is having what is facing by the people now, no? uh, so the now and the other publics. So that that can precipitate uh, psychiatry or mental disorders. So so it is important to um, to um, detect this uh, early symptom so that we can uh, we can uh, treat accordingly um, so in um, as what was mentioned by professor rosna just now about the you know, some of the symptom of the uh, stress um, um, experienced by students like uh, you know uh, tremendous anxiety depression and suicidal suicidal thought eh? So these are the symptoms that have to be given attention, and um, you know, uh, so that they can be uh, they can be seen and treated early to prevent further complications. Um, I think so. So uh, in this in this current situation, uh, with the various uh, uh, factors contribute to the stresses uh, to the student, uh, it is uh, very important for 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 the for us. To look at this uh, symptom uh, or sign uh, or signal, so that we can we can help them. So I think uh, that's all about my uh, about my discussion. Earlier, okay. later, we, yeah.
Yeah, yeah any term. specific, uh, Prof, any specific kind of resistance that the student can approach, I mean, uh, when they get this kind of illness. I mean, this mm. is quite disturbing uh, yeah. on the student attitude and behavior and they can prolong uh, being an illness. So what, mm. what is your uh, opinion on this? I mean, what, what can the student do if they have such situation? Um, we, we have a counselors, eh? we have counselors. Uh, so they can see the counselors, and then the counselors can, you know, can decide, can decide whether to, to refer to psychiatrists. Eh? And then uh, we can uh, help in that way. Of course, uh, not necessarily they directly come to see psychiatrists because some of them are not really having this uh, uh, mental disorder, but they have this what we call mental health uh, disturbance, eh? mental health disturbance that uh, that can be solved uh, at as a level at uh, maybe maybe the counselor level rather than uh, to uh, by psychiatrist yeah. okay uh, thank you very much uh, prof amit for the brief uh, description on the mental mm -hmm. health and the mental illness it seems that the mental illness is more severe as mm -hmm. compared to the mental health oh, this, so yeah. yeah so that's why uh, students uh, have to be a bit uh, caution on this uh, so that they can get early uh, I mean, uh, cure or preventive measures uh, to uh, uh, to stop that from prolonging into that. By the way, I mean, uh, participants, you can send any of your questions to the chat so that we can uh, read your question and put forward to the panelists. Okay. Uh, and then uh, thank you very much, Prof. Amit. Hope you can unmute. Uh, sorry, mute, mute. And then uh, our third. Uh, panelists today, Associate Professor Dr. Zainal, I would like to pose to you some questions. Uh, are the mental issues prevalent or common even before the COVID-19 pandemic? And if yes, how, how worse it is now? And from your experience, what are the best support system for a person who is facing depression? Please, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Zainal. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Professor. Um, I will need my slides to, to present. Uh, just one second. Um, okay, <clears throat> so I hope. Okay. Um, okay. Um, can you see my slide, uh, Prof? Or One second. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Assalamualaikum and everyone. So, I'll be sharing on <coughs> uh, some of the prevalence of mental health issues. <coughs> so, mental health issues are these are real issues. Uh, I think by uh, by now, from Prof. Osna and Prof. Abdul we know that these are real issues, especially with uh, COVID-19 pandemic. <coughs> Now, these are global prevalence or how common is it? So we see depression of 28%, anxiety of 26.9% or uh, more often than not, <clears throat> it's a stress in 6.5%. This is uh, data from a study published in 2021. Now, there are also another study published um, last year that reported about one in 10 of, of uh, general public <clears throat> experience suicidal thoughts or thinking about committing suicides. So that's, that's, uh, that's very concerning. Now, what about university students? <clears throat> when we talk about university students, this is a Malaysian study, so just published recently, that shows more than half of the university students are now experiencing uh, stress <clears throat> and anxiety. And one third of the students, or th most 30% are, are experiencing depression. So these are very alarming uh, statistics, <clears throat> especially with, you know, uh, with <clears throat> everything that is that's going on uh, at the moment. So, so um, from the uh, student affairs or SAGE point of view, um, <clears throat> uh, I would like to highlight that, that there are services provided at the university level and um, at other levels as well. <clears throat> so at the university level, 
Um, I couldn't emphasize more on the importance of seeking help or to reach out to the uh, the, uh, the correct support system. So first things first, you can talk to your university counsellor. We have a certified university counsellor. Her name is Miss Radia, and she's ever willing to listen to any of your griefs or anything that you would like to share with, uh, with her. So she's um, contactable via phone or email. You can drop her an email for appointments. But you can also uh, resort to your peers, <coughs> talk to your peers. Uh, there are, there's a club called the uh, Peer Wellness Club at UOC. If you have an Instagram account, you can follow the club at PWC underscore UOC. These are your, maybe your classmates, your friends who you can talk to, right? But if you for some reason are not comfortable with the counselors or some of your friends, you may talk to someone anonymous, <clears throat> someone who you don't necessarily know, right? But who could who, who could help you? Uh, so there's a website <clears throat> uh, um, called the Befrienders. So these are helpline for you, uh, especially for for anyone who, who are feeling lonely, in distress, in despair, or having suicidal thoughts. Um, <clears throat> so this is um, a very good avenue or another. Um, um, options for you to to seek help. <clears throat> All right. So again, having a um, support system is very important because rarely I've seen anyone struggling with mental health issues can survive um, alone. <clears throat> so it is very important that you know uh, when to seek help and who to refer to to seek help. So when you get out of the um, issue. Right, it doesn't necessarily mean that the things were easier, um, but it, it could mean that you just got stronger, <clears throat> right? Okay, so it, like, if I go back to uh, Prof. Cairo's um, questions before, is it more common now? Yes, um, from literatures and from of the some of the articles that that, <clears throat> that I went through, mental health issues are common even before COVID-19. Just so we know, <clears throat> but COVID-19 pandemic. <clears throat> has uh, made it worse, basically, uh, because of some of the factors mentioned by Prof. Rosna before. And also, we've also seen a lot more engagement with social media, right? Uh, so with that much more engagement, we also see a lot of cyberbullying and anything that, you know, uh, things like, for example, you see videos of people committing suicide, you know, it makes you think of doing such things, right? So the mental health issues are worse in COVID-19 because of other additional factors that play a role. <clears throat> uh, that's all from me for now, uh, Prof. Cairo. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You uh, yes, uh, Prof. Zaino for your deliberation on this, uh, some of the avenues for students to seek help. Quite interesting. Uh, we see the alarming statistics. I think it's uh, quite common across the globe. Uh, we have a similar case, uh, for example, as I mentioned to you from Texas A&M, uh, uh, it's very apparent or obvious that uh, stress and anxiety has been uh, predominantly the most common impacting on students nowadays. Yeah. Uh, okay, we have a question from uh, the participant. May I read this question? Uh, due to the multifaceted changes and challenges of the COVID-19, some of the students are facing difficulties in terms of commitment and schedules in adapting and surviving to these pandemic measures. For us who have the motivation to continue studying, but are severely impacted in managing full-time academic schedule at the same time working and securing financial resources. It's about balancing between working and study life and caring for sick family members among others, if not managed properly. Mentally, they are burnt out, if not nervous burnt out. It's highly possible during this lockdown. So the question asks is, does University of Cyberjaya have any plan 
to consider offering part-time undergraduate program, bachelor in psychology to be specific, or oh, it's more of this. Uh, maybe Prof. Rosna uh, <laughs> to attend to this question, how they can cope with this uh, part-time rather than being full-time. <laughs> Prof. Uh, Prof. Hairo is the boss. Yeah. <laughs> Prof. Hairo is the boss. If he, if he you know, uh, ask us to... <laughs> to uh, uh, begin the uh, start the program then. <laughs> well anyway um we empathize with the problems yeah of the student yeah um right now we don't offer actually uh, any uh, part-time psychology uh, program yet yeah either um diploma or 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 a bachelor degrees um uh, uh, masters and phd yeah, on on research but if there is uh, uh, you know <laughs> needs for that i just you know maybe uh, um up to the management to decide prior uh, <laughs> or to discuss further we can we can uh, uh, discuss further uh, on that not, maybe maybe we can uh, relate to the issue the the principal issue i mean like for example these students have to divide their, divide their time between class mm -hmm. care to working and also to look after sick families how 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 would you see you know sometimes they are burnt out and how can they cope with with such mm -hmm. a situation yeah they they have to have a, a stay disciplined themselves yeah they have to be disciplined and be strong yeah uh to whatever uh circumstances uh, work that they have to do yeah um they can divide their time yeah uh, um, uh, with family matters and also academic matters and also of course uh, have to be flexible yeah um uh, everything online but it has to be disciplined yeah um you have to be disciplined even though online is it's not like in the uh, uh, uh campus uh, in the classroom yeah um maybe you can divide your time your 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 study and your family matters yeah and uh, how, when you want to um, attend the, your your lecture, okay. Um, uh, good to have a, a calendar, yeah. Um, that can you 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 can schedule your your work or block your time, yeah. Uh, every uh, uh, every day, uh, for example, your timetable for classes, yeah, for your routine work, all that, yeah. Uh, and also, um, um, you can also, if you miss classes uh, online, or maybe due to uh, uh, problems that you encounter, okay, what you can do, yeah, you can just um, have a discussion, okay, um, with your your groups or with your friends or your classmates, yeah. Uh, through online discussion or by virtual study session, okay. But the most important thing is to keep in touch with your peers. Yeah, it doesn't matter uh, via phone ke, calls ke, text messages ke, email or social media. Yeah, and uh, uh, stay connected. Yeah, uh, um, just because you are. Uh, isolate uh, at home with all your your concerns yeah uh, doesn't mean that you are alone okay uh, you can have close and regular contact with your professors your lecturers uh, your lecturers or uh, your classmates or your friends okay so um uh, the uh, the other thing yeah um you must manage your time wisely yeah, uh, uh, so it is important, yeah, that you manage your time wisely. Of, of course, yeah, you you will feel burnt out, but then, yeah, if you manage your time uh, wisely and systematically with your work, you know, you can, inshallah, yeah, you can uh, go through the hard time uh, uh, easily yeah so the most important thing yeah you know when is the de deadline 
uh, for your for your assignment, yeah, for your quizzes or whatever. When is your the time for your lectures? Yeah, okay. So um, that's my uh, my part, uh, Prof. Yeah, maybe, maybe other panelists have um, uh, other other opinions. Uh, okay, we leave that first. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Prof. Rosa, for for your uh, detail uh, response. And we have another question coming in. Uh, if the student refuse to speak out their problems, how can we help them? Uh, and uh, there are cases that students who either refuse or hesitate to share their problems. The key is, in my opinion, how do we get the student to open up? That's the whole another challenge for academic. May I, may I invite uh, Prof. Abdul Hamid to, to respond to this question? <laughs> yeah, some, sometimes yeah, this uh, different personality, yeah? different yeah. people, uh, they have different personality. Right. So maybe some of them, uh, they, they're not, they don't like to join. To, mm -hmm. to, uh, they don't like to, um, to, want to express themselves. So maybe uh, if the problem is if they stay alone, uh, they stay alone, then uh, we don't have uh, access to that. Uh. But if they stay with the parent or with someone or with the peers, then uh, so the peers can can you know, can uh, help them by um, you know um, maybe uh, uh, bring them to uh, counselors or okay. uh, and so on. That's right, it. right. Yeah. yeah. I, I just want to add the 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 Prof. Uh, Rosna. Uh, okay. Yeah, please. Rosna just now. Eh? Yeah. Uh, no, one of the one of the one of the ways uh, to reduce this. Eh? I need, uh, no exercise. Eh? <laughs> exercise is very important. The physical exercise because mm -hmm. it, it affect mm -hmm. our physical health yeah. and also not, not diet. Eh? Diet also important mm. in addition to all these things eh? because they stress up. Eh? Make up. Make use of our strength. Uh, so important to uh, have that thing done eh? because we, when we are locked down at home, we, we may not doing that eh? because of the we are occupied with this busy, busy schedule and that. Eh? Okay, yes. Uh, Prof Zaino would like to add to this question: How to get those students, you know, with the problems to speak out and get the correct avenue so that they get the correct attention from people? How how would we manage to to get that? True. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you, Prof. I just I uh, just would like to share uh, maybe a little bit of my experience dealing with some of these students. Uh, yeah. Okay. I've had students who, uh, <clears throat> if we can, I can use the word introvert, <clears throat> who you know like to keep things to themselves and stuff. So I think the the idea for or the challenge for um, us academicians is to uh, to find out um, who are the the student. Uh, <clears throat> Basically, close with, uh, you know, they are who they are, their best friends, even among the family members who are they closest with and stuff like that. Because it, for this type of students, it's, it's really not easy for them to uh, to share any of their <coughs> issues. But one is, uh, I think, uh, is the trust issue. Um, they some of them may think that when they come to us, <coughs> we may not may not. Keep, keep the information, information confidential. confidential. So, uh, ensuring confidentiality uh, is is one of the other important thing that I think. Um, so, just to sum up, <clears throat> when dealing with students who are not always uh, willing to open up, we have to use another approach that is identifying, you know, um, the via support system. And when we talk to the students, we have to always en ensure that the things we discuss are confidential. That could build up uh, a stronger trust between us and the students. Yeah. That is uh, for me, Prof. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Prof. Uh, uh, Zainal, for your response for you. on, on okay. that uh, uh, issue. We have another yeah. question coming in. Uh, I think this I will address to uh, Prof. Rosna yeah. to respond. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, My question is that since psychology lecturers are well equipped with knowledge of the effect of COVID-19 lockdown on mental health of students, how are they different from other lecturers in handling the students 
during this during online learning or ensuring the students' mental health? Please, uh, from Rosna. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I think as a, as a lecturer in psychology, I think you're the right. <laughs> our, background, our background was uh, actually uh, trained as a psychologist. We handle okay. a lot of patients with yeah. problems, you know, not only a disaster, I mean, disaster like COVID-19, other other kind of disaster too, yeah, uh, like flood or, or, you know, tsunami or whatever. So um, our background as a psychologist, you know, we, we are really trained and we have fulfilled the, the, the training hours of that, you know, for to qualify as a psychologist. And we do a lot of research, yeah, uh, and training uh, for that. Uh, not to say that we are completely um, equip ourselves uh, to face uh, the, the, you know, uh, this pandemic, but we try our very best and from time to time, yeah, we, we improve and we learn from other countries, from other people, from, from the community itself, yeah, from our family members, yeah? So, um, um, <laughs> uh, not to say that we are better off than any other uh, a profession, you know. Um, well, we are, you know, the doctors, the frontliners, they are, you know, they are uh, really equipped and they are really good. Uh, but we, the most important thing, we have to equip ourselves, yeah, we have to uh, prepare ourselves uh, mentally, yeah, emotionally, socially, spiritually, yeah, to face all this, um, uh, whatever uh, circumstances uh, uh, with the patients or with the people who who contacted this COVID-19, yeah? yeah. So uh, from time to time, we improve ourselves. That's why we, we need uh, to go for training, you know, we need to go more for our our professional uh, things, yeah, so that from time to time we catch up with the updated, yeah, um, situation and also um, uh, this whatever disaster, yeah, we don't know this disaster uh, will last for how long, but still, you know, um, for whatever matter, we still, you know, have to face the challenges. Okay, Prof. Okay, thank you so much uh, for that uh, deliberative response, uh, feedback on the question. We have other questions uh, that we have collected earlier from the students. Um, one of the questions is, uh, could the lack of interaction with other people be a trigger towards symptoms of depression that has been declining until lockdown? How do I keep sane with this situation where life still move on even though you are staying still at home? May I uh, get uh, uh, Prof Hamid to uh, provide some feedback on this question, please? Yeah. <clears throat> I think what, is, what is mean here is uh, depression as a symptom of mental mm. health disturbance. Yeah. Not, yeah. The, not, the, not the depression as an, as an illness eh, that we see in hospital. Um, mm. I think uh, as what um, this uh, this level, I think the psychological uh, intervention uh, is uh, is uh, is useful. In the sense that um, even though you are being locked down, but you still can communicate. Still can communicate with the with the others uh, to to release uh, to release uh, some of these uh, stresses. You know. We have as a mean uh, this, this current uh, era. We have uh, we have this other social mean social meaning uh, social social means. So uh, I think that is one of the way to reduce this eh? reduce this. Uh, as right. well, you know that the depression uh, the the stressor the other stressor that you mentioned I think was uh, touched earlier by Prof Rosna. Okay. Yeah. That, okay. Uh, thank you so much for the response, eh? uh, Prof Hamid. Uh, another question, we moved on to another question. How can students maintain health, healthy mental during this pandemic of COVID-19? Is there any educational resources that they can refer to to improve their mental health as an individual? May Prof. Zainal uh, could respond to this uh, question, please? 
Okay, uh, thank you, Prof. Um, so the question was on resources that <coughs> the students can refer to, right? Um, now, if I want to, uh, I can recommend some mm -hmm. books, but uh, having said that, rarely students nowadays refer to books, right? So there are numerous online resources. If you Google online resources for mental health, you will find many. But um, personally, I would recommend it. If you, any of you are struggling with mental health, <coughs> I would personally recommend go to easy resources, for example, music <coughs> uh, or even movies. Uh, so things like this, these, these are some of the, uh, I think personally is one of the uh, most effective uh, ways of, uh, of dealing with, with uh, mental health issues. But again, if you go back to resources, so my, my answer would be um, there are many online resources that you can uh, locate in the internet uh, and you can choose from. <coughs> um, okay. There are specifics to, to some mental illness as well. <coughs> thank you. Paul. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, next question actually is uh, being forward, forward to me. Do you think that this pandemic has given a chance for us to get closer to the God by having more time to pray? Well, how could I look at this? Uh, well, to accordingly uh, uh, to what my understanding is actually, uh, there are three types of classification of health. The first is of course uh, physical health in a human being. So uh, as a human being, we have to get physically fit uh, that means that we don't have any disease uh, or we get to have uh, good immunity. For example, we take the COVID-19 vaccination to stay healthy. That is very primary and the uh, components of getting healthy is, is via exercises maybe uh, through uh, training, uh, having some sports or some leisure, hiking, all those things. So don't, those are for the first time, which is the physical health. The second one is actually on the mental health. How can we build up our mental health? Now, mental health is something that is uh, uh, dealing with our emotions and uh, how can we cope with those normal stress of life and be productive and fruitful. I look at this uh, one way of, of getting a, a read from uh, stress or, uh, or reduce stress or depression or anxiety is well, we have to have the capability, like for example, to enjoy life. You know, find something that would make you enjoyable. Uh, you bounce back when you have a difficult experience that you face. Uh, you try to make yourself emotionally stable. And of course, uh, you try to feel safe and secure and create happiness wherever you can so that the environment will keep enhance of your uh, enthusiasm and determination and motivation and the spirit of moving forward. So that is very important. And, and uh, finally, is the spiritual health. So when we can we submit to God uh, to get, uh, you know, like something uh, that can get rid of from these uh, uh, problems of health issues? Well, I look this way uh, as a Muslim, I, I can talk on the basis of Islam. Uh, the religion, Islam and spirituality is something that we cannot separate. It is inseparable. And in fact, this is the core of uh, the central of Islam, whereby it is we have to submit to the creator or the God. So that is why Islam stress more on what we call this uh, uh, five pillars, uh, fundamental rules. And utmost important from the five pillars is actually pray to perform daily five times prayer. Why this is, has been the route to Islam? Because by performing prayer, that could build or develop a person to obey to his Lord or Creator. Prayer would certainly make a person to realize his existence in this world, which is to follow the teachings of Islam, for example, as documented in the Quran and supported by the Hadith. So this, uh, there were many verses of Quran that narrates the importance of prayer. That's why in Islam, the stress for prayer is one part and parcel of the speed building up your spiritual and that can reduce the tense, the stress, the disorders. Uh, and in replacement, you will get something we call the word tranquility. So this is very important. In fact, 
uh, we go through the Quran, it spell out, it spell out tentang, uh, with regards to code of ethics, uh, behavior, social life, and how a Muslim should behave and live in this world, harmony. So uh, those, those, those are the things that I think um, make sense uh, that uh, prayer uh, for the Muslims in particular help reduce and also control some kind of stress or depression. Uh, moreover, for the non-Muslim, maybe uh, there is a way like, for example, you take yoga or meditation. I had a friend who normally spend about one hour doing some meditation, you know, uh, and he believed that by having that meditation will keep him fit uh, spiritually and, you know, and, and uh, keep, him, keep him, him himself to build up uh, his attitude uh, being a normal person. So actually, uh, religion has some role, I mean, in, in curbing some of this, uh, uh, what we call this mental health. So I would certainly believe that uh, there are some, uh, I mean, uh, uh, in, in some weight uh, to these uh, uh, Islamic principles that can overshadow uh, some of our problems, you know, when we get close to the Creator and and we will rationalize our mental thought and so on. So that's what I can share for that particular question. We have another question. Uh, how does one cope with the thought of his or loved ones are infected with COVID? Uh, this one I open to anyone who would like to respond. How can one cope with the thought of his or her loved one are infected with COVID, you know? So how, how can we, we, we counsel or um, I don't know how, how, how to about, go about. Maybe one of the panels can react to this question. <laughs> Prof, I mean, any, any idea? <laughs> I think it's, um, this, is, uh, this is a reality, you know. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, those who are uh, almost of, um, all of us uh, worry about our our family, yeah, yeah, our family member, ones. our child, yeah, exactly. get infected with this. So it's yeah. currently. So um, uh, we know that the other thing is that this uh, this condition, this virus, actually at the moment um, there is no curative, mm. no no curative. I mean, so we have to stick to the uh, to the what to this our SOP, the SOP because this will somehow help. And then I will say again. Um, you know, with this, uh, again, I, as a Muslim, uh, we pray to God, yeah. pray to God, uh, yeah. ask him for help, you know, exactly. so, make dua, yeah. yeah, make dua, yes, and then, I think that's the way, because it's reality, mm. okay, all right. that's my answer. But okay, maybe. all right, thank you. Uh, there's another question that comes in, Prof, thanks, it's just a word of motivation for all of us. COVID pulls down everyone and everything, and it's not easy to move through life as we plan. COVID is a situation as such, it has been viewed as a situation and it shall not supersede our abilities, our strength, our passion, our goal, and our psychological well-being. As a person, let's keep moving forward, having the society with us. The pandemic has brought us together to treasure one another as everyone is moving towards one direction to be alive and sustain our life to continue breathing. This is the essence of life as understood by Aristotle, uh, the philosopher. COVID has moved us back to basic. Uh, let's be alive to ourselves and to others by being better, better and better day by day. We love makes this from one of the lecturers. I think he want to share uh, some of his thoughts, her thoughts, or his thought on, on this uh, session of uh, webinar. Okay, next, uh, I have uh, another, maybe this is the last question, posed to uh, Prof. Rosna maybe. Uh, online classes make me unproductive. Is there any way that can make me more productive and make my study interesting, just like the physical class? What, what is your opinion, <laughs> uh, Professor? <Rosna? laughs> How can that be, you know, a replacement? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, I heard from students, yeah, uh, online classes yeah. Um, subjected to distraction 
uh, due to lack of uh, interactions right. and also prolonged attention to computer screen. Yeah. yeah. Um, of course, your home is not like a campus. OK, um, and you are at home. OK, of, of course, a lot of distraction. Um, one study said that um, actually home um, is suitable place to relax rather than study. But you don't study in bed, <laughs> then, <laughs> then, then make you very comfortable. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, right. um, so that's that's the reason. Yeah. Um, so, um, um, as I mentioned, yeah, um, to make you productive, yeah, um, uh, or online classes. Okay, uh, you want to attend your live lectures. Yeah. Uh, all the time, okay? Uh, also active participation in online discussions and also in your study group, okay? Um, more, more, more on your, uh, keep on learning your content of the lectures, the assignments, yeah? Um, or you can post uh, online, yeah? The chat box, video calls, yeah? Um, and uh, it, uh, as usual, if in the classroom you are the active listener, yeah, uh, always nodding or whatever, responding to the lecture, but you might have to find different ways, yeah, um, uh, online. Okay, you might be uh, showing uh, or response by chatting or put emoji, you know, <laughs> or, or say something, you know, that yeah. make it interesting, not not just uh, quiet there and passive, yeah. Okay, there's a chat room, yeah. Okay, so online communication make it lively, yeah. You can respond from time to time, uh, pro, uh to the lecturers, okay, and write what you want to say or post yeah, your thoughts online, okay? Or you, you can express your emotion yeah, by emoji just now, yeah, as I mentioned, okay? Um, and also uh, be flexible, as I mentioned, yeah, online lectures, radio, uh, either videos or, seri uh, or, or series of readings, okay? Um, uh, uh, if you lose your internet connection, for example, during lecture or before lecture or during exam, and you're not being able to be online, yeah, uh, you still need to get work done, but you, you must have your backup plan. OK, download all your course materials so that you can access them offline and make sure you have the uh, professor's email address for numbers or that. Yeah, email lah, don't uh, WhatsApp. Yeah, that, that will disturb in the middle of the night or that. Yeah, so um, that's make yourself uh, prepared yeah, for, for the online. OK. And it is important to reach out early and often. Yeah, uh, uh, have con conversation with your professor. Yeah, uh, by email if possible. Then manage your time wisely. Confirm with your professor, your lecturers, uh, the important deadlines for assignment, quizzes, and exam. Okay, so um, uh, take break. As uh, Pro Hamid said, yeah, you have uh, uh, from time to time you take breaks roughly every hour, can yeah? Uh, maybe you can stand up, you stretch your job <laughs> in place, lah, can yeah? Okay, or take a coffee break, yeah. So uh, that that don't get you don't get bored, okay? Then keep in touch. Yeah, online you need to make conscious effort to stay connected. OK, so um, uh, still online, you can reach out your professor yeah, with questions. OK, discussion of the courses by virtual session. OK, all right. Um, uh, that's all to make your, your online interesting. OK, all right. <laughs> OK, thank you so much, Prof. Rosna, for your uh, feedback. Uh, I think we are almost time up. Uh, we are coming to the end and we hope that uh, it has been a very valuable platform for everyone on board today. And uh, it seems that this has been an added value of 
knowledge, understanding on some of our mental health issues and also the mental illness as debilitated by distinguished panels. I thank every one of these uh, distinguished panel uh, for for your time, for your deliberation on this and discussion on some of our issues today. And uh, that's about all that we have for our session for this time around. And uh, we will have a second series after this, following this. And uh, to wrap up, um, I think um, some of the initiatives that have been brought forward, I think can be right away implemented uh, by, uh, by us. Uh, and we, could, we do look into uh, the, the, the positiveness of, of ourselves, um, like you know, the saying you may keep yourself physically locked down, but mentally you should be free uh, as a normal person and you know enrich yourself uh, with all the uh, uh, things around you, your family, your parents, your friends, uh, you still can do uh, the connection. And uh, with that, I think I thank every one of you that come on board for today. And we stay safe, stay healthy, lindung diri dan lindung semua. Sekian, wabillahi taufiq wa dayu, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Have a nice day to every one of you. Thank you so much. <coughs>